Amen. We had water in the baptismal pool, and it was nice and warm. And, brother, you could just uh, blank that screen out because we're not doing offering anymore. <laughs> Don't hit next because I got some pictures I got to show you. Don't worry. It's not about getting, you guys getting baptized. <laughs> but anyway, we had a great time last week with the baptismal pool. If anybody that wants to get baptized, we got some young people that, that said that they would like to be baptized. And that's fantastic. But if you want to be baptized in water, let us know. I'm telling you, I'll fill it up every week. I will. Praise God. Uh, but uh, it, it, it was a great time. And um, we just thank the Lord for what he's doing in the lives of this church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then uh, we're, we're in this series. Uh, how many of you have ever seen somebody with a WWJD bracelet on or a t-shirt or hat or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I see a couple hands out there. The rest of you just haven't looked. Um, but they're all over the place. But we're in this, uh, this series called uh, What Would Jesus Undo? And we're talking about um, things that he would he would just that grieve his heart uh, that that make it make it uh, make it as as the uh, Bible verse this morning talked about maybe like he would want to spit us out of his mouth because we're neither hot nor cold things that bring a turning to his stomach and uh, you know, he wants uh, something better and and, and uh, week number one we talked about spiritual apathy and and, and that lukewarm warm spirit. And then a couple of weeks ago, we talked about hollow worship. <coughs> and Jesus wants all of our hearts and how worship isn't just the songs that we sing. Amen. We talk about worship and some of the song, sometimes we, we just get mixed up in the fact that, you know, worship doesn't happen just on Sunday morning. It's our whole lives. Amen. And... Uh, to introduce kind of today's theme, I want to tell you a story about something that Jesus would undo. Jesus would undo. So here it goes. The light turned yellow just in front of me. And he did, this, he did the right thing, stopping at the crosswalk, even though he could have beaten the red light by accelerating through the intersection. Now a tailgating woman was furious and honked her horn, screaming in frustration, as she missed her chance to get through the intersection, dropping her cell phone and her makeup. As she, as she was still in mid ranch she heard a tap on her window and looked up to the face of a very serious police officer. The officer ordered her out to exit her car with her hands up. He took her to the police station where she was searched, fingerprinted, photographed, and placed in a holding cell. After a couple hours, a policeman approached the cell and opened up the door. And she was escorted back to the, the booking desk where the arresting officer was waiting with her personal effects. He said, I'm very sorry for the mistake. You see, I pulled up behind your car while you were blowing your horn, flipping off the guy in front of you, and, and cursing a blue streak at him. I noticed the What Would Jesus Do bumper sticker, the Choose Life license plate holder, the Follow Me to Sunday School bumper sticker, and the chrome-plated Christian fish emblem on the trunk. So naturally, I assumed that you had stolen the car. <laughs> what would Jesus undo? Something that Jesus would undo is a behavior or an attitude that he despised with all his heart, and that is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Those who claim one thing, they live in another way. Jesus would undo hypocrisy. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, Lord, we heavily lean upon your grace and mercy today as we realize that none of us are perfect. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to our hearts directly and Lord, help us not to be focused on those around us, but focus on ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now that may sound a little hypocritical to say, God, help us to focus on ourselves, not on those around us. Because we're always told we need to focus on other people. Amen? 
We need to help other people. We need to be outwardly focused as a church and not so inwardly, inwardly focused. But, you know, there are times in our lives when there are certain things that we talk about that we need to say, God, use that mirror of your word to shine a light into my life and let me see my reflection according to your word, not looking at others in judgment. Now, I want to ease into the subject because hypocrisy is, is, is no fun to talk about. It's not easy to see in our own lives, is it? Oh, it's hard to see when we're hypocrites. But however, it's easy to see in the lives of other people how hypocritical they can be. How many of you, raise your hand, how many of you would say that you know a hypocrite? Raise your hand. There we go, okay. Others are saying, I'm not raising my hand. No. Okay, now don't raise your hand on this one, but how many of you have a hypocrite sitting next to you? Mm. See, it's easy to see hypocrisy in other people's lives. But it's hard to see it in our own. In my opinion, this is a subject that sometimes we, we, it's mistakenly belittled by pastors like me. For example, there's an old pastoral joke. One of the most common things that you will hear from people who have objections to uh, Christianity in the church and coming to church and all that kind of stuff. is They'll say, I'm not going to church because it's full of what? Hypocrites. hypocrites. Yeah, it's full of hypocrites. They say it all the time. I'm not going to, church, going to church because it's just a bunch of hypocrites going there. And what pastors will often say is, well, you might as well join because we have room for one more. <laughs> and we think it's kind of funny, and it is kind of funny. You know, it really is. There's a little bit of truth to it. But in my opinion, that really dismisses some really some some real pain that many people have when they're disappointed by the behavior or actions of those who claim to follow Christ. Some of you might know this firsthand. There was someone that you you looked up to spiritually. They said one thing, but they did something else. Very, very painful to go through that. And and you know, there are some Churches that have gone through this big time. It seems like it's everywhere in the church with pastors. And churches being hurt because of pastors saying one thing and then turning around and, and they find out that there's something else going on in their life. It could be your mother or your father. They were one thing in church, but man, when you got home, they were just totally different. It could be incredibly painful. That's why the, the, we joke about it, but it's, it's, it's hurtful for people who have lived through that. Some people see hypocrisy and, and you, you claim, as you claim this and you did this and it devastates them. They walk away from church. Many people walk away from God because hypocrisy is a horrible sin. And what would Jesus undo? Jesus would undo hypocrisy. I like what one theologian uh, and author said. His name is Brennan Manning. And I've heard this quote many times. And if you, if you listen to DC Talk, I know all of you are big DC Talk fans, but if you listen to DC Talk as a Christian rap group, they're from the 80s, late 80s, early 90s. But anyway, they, they broke up. Anyway, the... Uh, they, uh, they, they had this, this one interlude between the songs, and I heard this many times. I never knew who said it. It was Brennan Manning. He's an author and a, a theologian. He said this. The single greatest cause of atheism is, the single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips, then walk out the door and deny him with their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Kind of hits home, doesn't it? What would Jesus undo? Jesus would undo hypocrisy. So let's go ahead and build a foundation today in understanding what hypocrisy is. But to understand what it is, we're going to look at, acknowledge what it's not. 
So let's learn, first of all, what hypocrisy is not. And if you're taking notes, or if you see your notes there, I know we didn't have a bulletin, but I still made bulletin notes. Here it is. Hypocrisy is not the disparity, disparity between what we do and what we wish we did. Hypocrisy is not the disparity between what we do and what we wish we did. It's not the difference between how we behave and how we wish we behave. Like, I wish I didn't have bad thoughts, but I do. I wish I didn't say that, but I did. That's sin, but it's not hypocrisy. There's a difference between sinning and being hypocritical. Hypocrisy is a sin, yes. But Hypocrisy is the gap between what we show and what we are. It's the difference between what we say and how we live. It's the difference between our public persona and our private character. What would Jesus undo? He would undo the show when the real life isn't consistent with what we show. In fact, whenever Jesus would rail against hypocrisy, there was a Greek word that he used. It's the word hypocrites, or hypocrites. Kind of sounds like hypocrites, doesn't it? And what this word literally means, it means it's an actor or a stage player. It means one who hides behind a mask. In fact, if you've ever seen a Greek play, how many of you have ever went to an ancient Greek play? I know there's some old people here, but I don't think we're that old. I got one chuckle out of it. But the hippo, the hypocrites were literally the masks that they would wear. As a matter of fact, Brother Ray, would you show that next slide? And it's all the way down at the bottom. There we go. These these are these are clay masks or copies of like clay masks that they would wear in, in the Greek uh, plays, okay? And each one represented a different emotion. And these were the, the, the hypocrites, or the hypocrites, however you say it, that they would wear. In fact, if you go to the next one, I know it's kind of creepy looking here. If you go to the next one, this one is anger. So when the actor would be angry, you know, he would put this covering on his face. He wouldn't have to act it out. I mean, he would, there, there really wasn't any spoken words in these plays. There was just a lot of acting out. And this is how they would show their anger. Now, aren't you glad that I don't preach with something like this on my face? I mean, I know there's a bunch of preachers out there that preach angry, man, but this is just weird. I mean... That'd be creepy, wouldn't it? But also, there's this, there's this one. And we, this one is pretty famous. Go to the next one there, brother. Yeah, that's really creepy, isn't it? That's, like, that's that happy happy face. That's that happy face, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, yeah, it's creepy. But here's the thing. There's a lot of people that walk around with one of these on their faces. Not literally, but, but, but figuratively. And we see them all the time, isn't it? They're the ones that go, Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, all glory to God, good to see you. Putting on a show like everything's great and they, 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 they love their spouse and everything and yet they fought with their spouse all the way to church. But, oh, praise the Lord, we're fine and we need to build each other up. By the way, did you see what she wore to church? Man. Did you hear about brother and sister such and so? Everything's good, though. They sit in the foyer of the church and they just... Hypocrites. They look one way on the outside, but their hearts are hard. As a matter of fact, you can go ahead and turn that off. 
I just don't want that creepy face behind me while I preach. <laughs> Reminds me of the Mc. Have you have you seen the new McDonald's Happy Meal box? Is that Happy Meal box with the creepy smile on it? It's like weird, man. It's like real creepy. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it makes it look, look like it's going to be good for you on the outside. Big smiles on the inside, man. You don't want to eat that. Anyway, um, Paul has a verse, a little verse to me that just best resounds what hypocrisy is. He says it this in Titus chapter 1, verse 16. He says this. They claim to know God. They claim to know God, but how do they show? But by their actions. By the way they live, they deny him. They claim to know God, but they actually deny him. And Jesus hated this. He talked very, very directly about what hypocrisy was. And, and he said, anytime we're giving to be seen or, 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 hey, I'm going to be generous. I want everybody to know how generous I am. That's hypocrisy. As a matter of fact, the, the temple, they set it up so people could actually do this. They had these, see, they didn't receive offering like we do. They had these, um, these, these offering uh, vessels that, as you went in, you put your offering in these vessels. And they were made of brass, okay? And there were a lot of people who would just take those, take it, the, 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 like pennies, you know? And I don't know. Uh, I know brother brother Ray would love this counting all the pennies, but people would just come in and they would dump their coins in there to make as much sound as they could, so it would sound like they were being so generous. So people would turn and hear this cling 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 cling, and and they were being hypocrites. They were only giving to be seen. And Jesus talked about the Pharisees about how they would pray to try to impress people. There's actually uh, evidence that these, these Pharisees and such would pray, literally pray on the street corner as people walked by. And they would say, you know, these, these long, resounding, repetitive prayers, you know, oh, dear God, we glorify you. We pray for such and such. And, uh, you know, they put on this, this proud, outward appearance of spirituality to oppress other people. And Jesus said it was completely hypocrisy. It's hypocritical if you fast to be noticed. Why do you think Jesus tells us, or, or the Word of God tells us, that when we fast, we should take care of ourselves? No, nobody should know that you are fasting. I mean, oh man, I've been fasting so long. Oh, I'm so hungry. Their face is all messed up, and their hair is undone. And they look like they've been crying and because they want to, and everybody to know that they've been fasting. But you know what? Nobody should know that you're fasting. Now, it's okay to say, you know, hey, can you help me? I'm fasting for such and such. Can you pray with me that I can be faithful in this? That's one thing. But there's people out there that will let you know that they're fasting by the way they look hypocrisy. And Jesus hated that. Jesus hated hypocrisy. You know, whenever people take advantage of the poor, he hated that. Jesus never spoke more harshly than he did when, when people were putting on a mask. And if you ever notice in Scripture, Jesus only really got angry with the religious Jesus never got angry at the sinners for sinning. But he got angry at the religious for their hypocrisy. As a matter of fact, uh, one time he entered the temple and people were selling animals as a sacrifice. And he did, he, you know, there was all the things going on in the temple. And he didn't come over and say, now boys, I didn't tell you, I told you not to do that. That you guys need to be nice. You know, if you're going to do this, you shouldn't do it for personal profit. You should, you should actually, any profit that you make, he didn't say any profit that you make, you should give to the temple. He didn't say that at all. Jesus came in and he says, I'm not going to stand for this. 
He started flipping tables over, and, and, and he's, he's, he's making, the, the Bible describes this as he's making this tool, this whip, this, this implement. He was angry about the hypocrisy of what was going on in his father's house. And he's turning over the tables and he says, this is my father's house. It's not going to be a den of thieves. And then this is a place where you seek my father in prayer. He never spoke more harshly than he did when people were hypocrites. When they put masks on. In fact, if you read Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 23, there's, there's this, and, and there's many sermons out there that, that people have preached. It's the seven woes of Jesus. And he goes, woe to people who live like this, and woe to those who do this. And one of these woes, he says in verse 27, he says this, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you play actors. You are like whitewashed tombs who look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of un, all sorts of ungodly stuff. You're full of dead. Your bones are dead. Everything's unclean. He was saying that on the outside, you appear righteous to everyone else. You put on a show. But on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And then he goes on and calls them, you snakes. You brood of vipers. Then he asks him a question. How will you escape being condemned to hell? What is the hypocrite? It's the one who looks good on the outside, but on the inside, they're very far from God. They want the illusion of public virtue, but inwardly they're full of private vices. And it's very interesting, in none of the woes did Jesus say, woe to them who say bad words. He didn't even say, woe to them who watch the wrong kind of TV programs and binge it on Netflix. <laughs> woe to you who use Facebook the wrong way. He didn't say, you know, woe to you who do bad things. He said, woe to you who do bad things and then act like you didn't do anything wrong, like you don't do anything wrong. Woe to you who put on a show. Not woe to you who are imperfect, but woe to you who are imperfect and act like you're something special. I would argue today that perhaps more than ever, We can see this in social media. I'm not going to preach against social media. Social media is a great tool. It really is. It's a great tool to be used by God. You know, it's just like the printing press. The printing press is a great tool to be used by God, and people perverted it and are using it for pornography. It's the same way with videos. It's the same way with music, okay? Facebook and social media are great tools that we can use by God. But I tell you what, it's also a breeding ground for hypocrisy. It's a place where you can all day long show what you want to show to people and stage it the way you want to stage it. Here's my perfect marriage. Click, selfie time. Look how good I'm looking. And there's filters and all kinds of other things. Just present it the way that you want to. Happens all the time. Now, I've got to be careful about this. But, you know, Instagram, and there's a lot of people who post on it. Here's me doing my, doing my morning devotion. Got their, their smiling face, their Bible, their cup of coffee. You know, it can't be holy in the morning devotion if you don't have your cup of coffee. <laughs> but they don't tell you that they set up that time that they took to set that perfect shot up took more time to do that than they did to read their devotion because their devotion is only three minutes long I 
I'm going to show you what I'm what I want you to see. Or there's what I like to call the Lego life. How many watched the Lego movie? It's okay. I'm not gonna, okay, the Lego movie. Okay. How that song go? Everything is awesome. Okay, I don't I don't know the rest of the words. That's the only words that I know of that whole song. Everything is awesome. And that's what we do on social media. Is it? Everything is awesome. Yeah, look, look at this. We can plan it all out. I'm depressed. I'm miserable. My marriage is failing, but everything is awesome. What would Jesus do? He would undo a spirit of hypocrisy. Now what we show, well, what we show is so different than who we are. Woe to you, Jesus said. How will you escape being condemned? If you're a little bit uncomfortable right now, that's probably a good thing because that means that you have some self-awareness. Because let me tell you right now, some of you are going, oh, oh man, I'm glad he's preaching about this. I'm going to have to share this on Facebook with so-and-so because they really need to hear this. I'm going to send them the, the link on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That hypocrite. It's easy to see it in other people, but it's hard to see it in ourselves, isn't it? But if you're, look, if you're feeling uncomfortable because you're recognizing some inconsistencies in your own life, that's a good thing. That means you're open to the Spirit of what God, or what the Spirit of God will show you. And what I want to do is I want to show you that there is hope for the hypocrite in all of us. Amen? There is hope. For the hypocrite and all of a sudden, let me tell you what, there's there's at least a little bit of hypocrite in all of us. We don't want to allow other people to see what we're going through. And we do like to put on a good face, a good show. But you know what? There's healing in the body of Christ and there's safety in the family of God. And Jesus said there's, in those same woes, Verse 26 of Matthew's Gospel there, he says this, Woe to you, teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean on the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they're full of greed and self-indulgence. You're showing the show. You're letting people see what you want them to see, but you have no substance. And he says this, Blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and the dish, then the outside will be clean. Hmm. First, let the Spirit of the Lord do the work internally where no one else sees. And when internally you're being conformed to the image of Christ, when the Spirit of God is working within you and the Word of God is transforming you, and then out from the outflow, you're becoming who God wants you to become. To be, and you're displaying the goodness of God as a reflection of his work internally. Not so that you can fool people, but because God is doing a work on the inside. See, we all can be hypocrites, but praise God, there's hope. But don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, Paul says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. It's being in the Word of God that transforms you, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. And see, we have such a problem with this. We really do. Because we judge people of what we see. And when somebody comes to Christ, we can be so harsh on them. Well, they shouldn't dress that way anymore. <coughs> or they shouldn't do that anymore. They shouldn't go there anymore. Don't be the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit. Let the, just pray for the person. The Holy Spirit, let the, let the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, transform them from the inside out. And here's the thing. We all have to allow that. How many of you have arrived in your Christian life? Don't raise your hand because when you raise your hand, you're, you're going to be prideful and you're going to miss the mark. 
See? We can all get to that point. Jesus has zero tolerance for hypocrisy. He can't stomach it. He can't stand it. It turns him and he hates it. But he has unlimited grace for a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus can't stomach the show or, or you, you know, the mask, the acting. But when somebody who's hurting drops the mask and says, forgive me, heal me, redeem me, save me, change me, Jesus' answer is always yes. Because he didn't come for those who appear to be righteous. He came for sinners. He didn't come for those who are, are healthy on the outside. He came for those who knew they were sick. He has no tolerance for hypocrisy, but he has unlimited grace for a sinner in need of grace and repentance. I pray today that whether it's here or online or wherever, that there are those that will drop the mask this morning. And they'll say, "What? I, I want to. You may say, I want to. But what if they find out I'm not perfect? What if they know my faults? What if they know that I'm showing one thing and I'm not? Listen to me. You have nothing to fear when you have nothing to hide. You have nothing to fear when you have nothing to hide. And you have nothing to fear when you're in the middle of a, a, a community of grace and you ask for help. This is what Proverbs 29 says. Proverbs 29, 13 says this. Whoever conceals their sin, whoever covers up their sin, doesn't prosper. They won't prosper. Whoever lives like this behind the mask never finds the blessings of God. Whoever conceals their sins and shows the false life on the outside, holding the truth on the inside, they do not prosper. But here's what I like about Proverbs. Many of Proverbs say one thing, and then in the middle of the Proverbs it says, but. But. And this one says, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. If you ask for help, you find and here's what I hope you understand. I, I, I hope that if you realize that you are living behind the mask, that when you drop the mask, when you are honest, there is power. And you are never as strong as you are when you, as you, are, when you are honest. You're, always, you're, you're never as strong or excuse me, you are only as strong as you are honest. We're not perfect people living a perfect life, pleasing God in a perfect way. We're human. We have struggles. We're messed up. We fall short. We have battles. We have struggles. We're afraid sometimes. We're inconsistent. We want to do one thing, but... We do something else. We don't want to have those thoughts, and we do. And we don't want to go back to that old life, but we do. But we come together with other people, and we open up, and we say, I need help. Pray with me. And then suddenly, in that moment of truth, you feel free. You see, we're always in bondage when we hide. Whoever hides their sins, conceals their sins, doesn't prosper. Whoever drops the mask, renounces it, we find mercy in the presence of God because Jesus has no tolerance for hypocrisy, but he has unlimited grace for those who are willing to come to him, who are in need of forgiveness. David prayed a prayer in Psalm 139. And I would ask that you would just Join in this prayer. 
Because this is what he says. David prayed, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense in me. And lead me in the ways of everlasting. Search me. Search me. Show me, God. Show me where I'm wearing a mask and don't even know it. Because believe me, if you wear this thing long enough, you don't even realize that you have it on. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, how many of you have worn a, a ring for a very long time and then when you take it off, it feels like you still have it on? Or you, you, you wear it. You know what? There's, there's been times when I'm laying in bed. And this is no lie. This is funny. I'm laying in bed. My eyes are closed, and I'm just laying there, relaxing. And then all of a sudden, I'm doing this. I'm because I think I have my glasses on. I'm, I'm trying to take my glasses off because I feel like they're on. See, if we wear it long enough, we don't even realize that we're wearing it anymore because it feels like it's a part of us. And when we take it off, it feels like it's still there because we've been wearing it so long. But we forget about it being there when we wear it. So what is the what is hypocrisy? It's the gap between what we show and, what, and who we are. What did we do with that gap? What did we do with that? Here's, here's what I hope you understand. That we don't close that gap between who we are and who we show. We don't close that gap with perfection. As a matter of fact, we can't close that gap. We cannot close the gap by ourselves between who we show we are and what we really are. We close the gaps with Christ. We don't close the gap with our outward behavior. Now I'm pleasing God. I'm perfect. We close the gap with Christ because he is our righteousness. He is our source. He is our healing. He is our redemption. He's the one that brings forgiveness. We try to close the gap with, with outward appearance and outward perfection. We're just making the gap worse. We let G Jesus do the inward work. We let the Holy Spirit work through us and in us, despite us. We read the word and we allow the word to just consume us. And he'll do the work on getting us on the outside. What would Jesus undo? He would undo hypocrisy. And in our culture today, we are ripe with it. We are ripe with it. We see it all over the place. The hardest place to see it, though, is in our own lives. Hardest place to see it is when we're doing it. We need to drop the mask and find mercy. I'd rather be an honest sinner with a lying hypocrite. No, excuse me. I'd rather be a uh, an honest sinner than a lying hypocrite because Jesus has no tolerance for hypocrisy. But He has unlimited grace for the sinner like me in need of forgiveness and a Savior. I hope that as you walk out here, you just leave the masks behind. Amen? Just leave the masks. Leave them at the altar. Leave them at the feet of Jesus. Accept his grace and his mercy. So let's pray. I know it's a dangerous prayer, but why don't you pray this with me? Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Test me. Show me, Lord, if there's any offensive way in me. Lead me to that place, Lord God, where I can find you. Father, I thank you today, and I believe by faith that, God, you're going to do the that, that work in us that needs to be done, that you're going to answer that prayer that David prayed 
Lord, that, that we put on our hearts, Lord, just search us. And rather than being hurt or afraid, that, Lord God, we would allow you to show us, God. And we thank you, Lord, that on the other side of that, there's healing and restoration and forgiveness and freedom. And there's grace and there's mercy. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, that those, Lord God, who lack that real godly community, Lord God, that they would come and, and find that place, Lord God, where they can grow in you. In that community, Lord God, where they would, they could just love and connect and grow. Where we can serve each other, Lord God. In faith and reality, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that there's only one true thing that can do the work, and it's your grace and it's your mercy in our lives. We need each other, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, for those who are just turning their lives over to you this morning. Letting go of those masks. Laying them before you, Lord God. They say, I need help. I need help, Lord God. Lord, minister to them strength. And help them, Lord God. I pray that in those conversations, we recognize, Lord God, that those are holy moments. And that you are bringing us to a, a place of healing, Lord God, as we confess our, our need of you, Lord. And we thank you for the grace of Jesus. We thank you for that grace. Hallelujah, Lord. As you keep praying this morning, there may be some of you this morning that you recognize that you need Jesus. The sinless one, the Lamb of God who was slain for the forgiveness of sin. Some of you are going to recognize that that's what you are doing right now. You need God. Other people will think, yeah, obviously you're a Christian. You're in church. But you know that you're not. You know you're just putting on a show. There's no real intimacy. You haven't been transformed. You're no different. But you know God has you here today. Because today is the day that he's going to make you new. There may be others here that people say there's no way that you're a Christian. And you know it. You're not even close. But you're drawn to the things of God and you recognize that there must be something more. You've tried everything because you know there's something more. Now you just have to give your life to Jesus. Those of you who would say, I need a Savior. I need Jesus. I need his forgiveness. I'm empty on the inside. If you want to, call on his name this morning. Just raise your hand. You need Jesus. Yes. Maybe those who say, you know what, I've, I've, I've asked for forgiveness before, but you know, my, I put that mask on. I'm not living the way that I know I should be living, but everybody else thinks that I am. But I need to give up that mask. And this is between you and God. If that's you this morning, would you just raise your hand? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we pray today? We just pray with each other, amen? Pray, Heavenly Father, I just surrender my life to you. I give it to you, Lord. Forgive me of all my sins and change me. I'm a sinner in need of your grace. And Jesus, I accept that forgiveness that you paid for on the cross of Calvary. 
And I ask that you would forgive me and live inside of me, Holy Spirit, that I might live for you. And help me to walk in your ways, Lord God. And help my walk to equal who I say I am in you. Lord God, we just thank you. Father, I pray for your people this morning, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that as we walk out of this place this morning, that, Lord, what we do and how we live our lives would be who we say we are, Lord God. And help us, Lord God, to find those things, Lord God, that you would have us to do, that as we do them, people can give you glory and honor, Lord God. And we thank you for that, Lord. Give us the the power in the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to live boldly for you. We pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. I want to ask that you stand. Amen. You just stand. And this is what I want to do. It's been a little bit of a heavy sermon. Hypocrisy is kind of like a heavy topic. But God is good, amen? amen? The Bible tells us that his mercy endures forever. His love endures forever. Amen? amen? So I want you to walk out of here this morning encouraged and uplifted and know that Jesus loves you. Amen? Amen? That God loves you, and he wants you to go out into the world and spread the love of God. Amen? Now, let me encourage you to do this. We're going to be starting a... Are, are we done recording? Anyway, we're going to be starting a, a new series in a couple of weeks, uh, and it's called God With Us, Out On...